a method person. They got to have A, B, C, D. It's got to be like that. But a prophetic teacher is, in, is, is yielded to the Lord and they teach as the Lord gives them the scriptures and they bring it together because they understand the engrafted word. Without the prophetic and the apostolic anointing, the evangelist won't be able to manifest the power because it, it is needed to convert the many people to the Lord. That kind of power is needed to convert the people to the Lord. That purity, one with that foundation, that double anointing is a mighty warrior of God that can tear down principalities and powers in the air and build the kingdom of God on earth. That's what God's looking for. The evangelist's job is to connect you to God through your heart. Then you will intimately know, there's that word yada, your God and do great exploits. If you don't yada God, if you don't know him in an intimate way, you can't be like Saul who had a relationship with God through Samuel. David had a relationship with God. Saul had a relationship with God through Samuel. You see the difference? You got to know your God. You can't just know him through me. And you can know him. All you got to do is say, Lord, I want to know you. I'm willing. I'm willing to go through whatever it is. I want to know you. I want to yada you. I want that intimate relationship with you. Like I said before, the three male ministries are the apostolic anointing of wisdom and judgment. And that overcomes the Canaanite spirit, which does not like judgment. If you're dealing with somebody that doesn't like judgment, the fire, consumption, all that kind of stuff, you're dealing with the Canaanite spirit. Because they don't want to be small. They like that religion. Oh, God, I believe in the left-handed gospel, you know, the, the grace and the blessings and the prosperity, but you can't have this until you come to the right hand of God, which is truth, law, judgment, death, limitation. And so he gives you the golden scepter. He extends the golden scepter over, and you can have this. It's yours. But you have to go through this first. Your, your, your foundation has to be built, and I'm going to show you that with Scripture tonight. So like I said, if you're dealing with somebody who doesn't like judgment, because judgment transforms believers' minds. That's apostolic. The prophetic anointing defies the Gergeshite natural mind, which transforms believers' emotions. Your emotions have to be transformed. If you're afraid... It's because you're afraid to, to lay down your life. A Gergeshite spirit is keeping you focused on this earthly life. And you don't understand that you're getting a whole lot more by sowing this life to reach eternal life. But a Gergeshite spirit will keep you thinking, this is my stuff. I don't want to lay down this stuff. So that's your emotions, your fear, your worry. An evangelistic anointing destroys an Amorite spirit. Allowing for self-will. See, an Amorite is in control. An Amorite is dominant. And it transformed believers' hearts. I told you before that I have a dream. It's coming more and more and more. But I have a dream that I'm on stage and I see black things come up out of people and run. That's how it's going to be. Because my authority, because the king of glory is inside of me and I'm pure and he goes out with that light. And I told you before, he said, when you sing, you sing my words and you, you suffered. I, I laid my life down for him. I said, Lord, if I don't have my music career with you, I don't want it. I want you. I don't care if I die and don't ever see it. I just want you. And when I did that, I learned intimacy with him, and now his spirit is in my voice. So he said, then I put you in front of my dark, um, people with dark things in them, and then I turn on the light. Can the darkness say, I don't want to go? The darkness doesn't get to argue. It has to go. When you turn the light on, the darkness has to go. And that's how people are going to be healed. It's how pure you are. It's not about those people out there. It's how much light you can carry.
Like I said, the three male ministries are apostle, prophet, evangelist. The two female ministries are pastor, teacher. In Galatians 3.28, though, in Christ, in Christ, in the anointed one, there is neither male nor female. When you're baptized in Christ, there is neither male nor female. When a person moves in the anointing, he or she moves in the authority of the Spirit, and there is no difference between a male or a female. The Spirit is in control. That, that's what the woman and the male is. It's the soul and the spirit. So if you are more dominant in your soul, then you're more of a female type spirit. And that's what the world is dominated by. But if you're connected to your father, if you're connected to your spirit, then you're more dominant in your male ministries, which is your apostolic, prophetic, and evangelist. Now in 1 Samuel 17, David picks up five smooth stones that represent five-fold anointing, right? But notice he only uses one of these. In 1 Samuel 17, 46 through 47, it says, this day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands. Hands, five-fold anointing. Don't miss the little tiny treasures that the Bible has. And I will strike you down and remove your head. What's head? Evangelistic from you and I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds blah 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 that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel this is why I'm doing it that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel and that all the assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear he doesn't give us what we want by our own hands it's spiritual principles right for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands here's a giant and here's a little boy. But the spiritual principle was he came in the name of the Lord. That was his weapon. And David knew his God. Now watch this. Now David does two things. I want you to see the foundation, okay? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm the pastor of this church and this is how this church is going to be. He prophesied to Goliath that he will smite him and cut off his head. So there is your evangelistic anointing. The declaration, it will be known that there is a God in Israel. God does not save with sword and spear. He does not fight in the natural realm. The declaration of wisdom, wisdom reveals spiritual principles and increases knowledge of spiritual and natural realm. So let's recap. David threw the apostolic and the prophetic stone before he ever threw the evangelistic stone that knocked him in the head. The apostolic is first. When that judgment is laid in this church, then the prophetic will be laid in this church. Then the evangelistic will be laid in this church. As long as I pay the bills <laughs> and we pay the bills, this is how it's going to be. This is the way God wants it. It's not going to be overrun by somebody who wants us to join their... their um, group <laughs> yeah I don't want to be part of that this is a non-denominational God rules I don't need a man covering okay so it's going to be apostolic prophetic and evangelistic foundation and that's all we need but he threw the apostolic word at him he threw the prophetic word at him because apostles and prophets lay the foundations and the evangelists bring down the giants you see the principles? Yes, it's really important that you see this. We can't take on the evangelistic atmosphere until we have the apostolic and the prophetic strong in us. And then it'll grow inside of us. These are the long-awaited sons, and they will manifest his glory on earth. Romans 8 talks about sons that are, the whole creation is groaning for these sons to be revealed. And that's what these sons are. They're evangelistic sons with power. They have the authority. They have the name of their daddy. And they carry that authority because they know who they are. When evangelists behead giants, total victory can be achieved and spoils can be taken. See, we're looking for a wealth transference. We know that the wicked have our money right now. Well, this is going to happen when the evangelists rise to power. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous.